Hey, how you doing? It's David Connolly here with another reason to ridicule Rink LinkedIn. LinkedIn, LinkedIn. And by the way, I love LinkedIn. I love li LinkedIn. is a fantastic website. But I think it's interesting. Uh, I posted a video before about this. It's interesting how people uh, behave a certain way on LinkedIn. And they all play this same game. Um... And it's a kind of master-slave thing with a little bit of self-appointed life coach thrown in. And I find it incredibly entertaining. Here is a classic LinkedIn post. And as is usually the case, the real magic is the comments. It's not the post itself. So it's the difference between a boss versus a leader. And here we go. You can check that out, you know. But it's the comments that are interesting. I mean, look at the comments, right? It's like somebody, first one. Leader, next one, leader, third one, leader. These people are all, <laughs> these people are all saying, by the way, hey, I'm a leader. Thank you for your definition. I have read your definition. I have absorbed the definition. I have contemplated the definition. And yes, I am a leader. Oh, hark the herald angels sing. I am a leader. And we go down, and there's a few who elaborate on it. You know, uh, absolutely a leader. So everybody's, <laughs> everybody, it's all about, uh, later, later. Uh, somebody goes a little bit, uh, into a little bit more detail and he says, being a boss is fine. Just don't expect respect or uh, any personal relationship beyond that. Um, and, uh, you know, loads of other tips, um, they're all over the place. But I just think it's so interesting how everybody... Everybody has a tip and everybody is so eager to kind of say, yeah, I'm the leader. Yeah, you know. Now, look, I suppose we're all free to come up with our own definitions of what it means to be a leader. And, you know, I'm not going to mess with anybody's belief systems here. But uh, for what it's worth, my own personal definition has a lot to do with how you live your life. And one of the key definers, at least for me, is uh, do you have the ability to go wherever you want at any given point in time? Now, unfortunately, uh, we all have, or maybe it's a good thing, we all have some obligations in life, you know. Even the Queen, uh, apparently, has certain obligations, and you could argue that's work, and that's life, you know. But if you can... Um, be in a position where you could at least hypothetically head off to the beach on a Monday morning, uh, then that's pretty cool, you know? If you're in a position where you have control over your emotions and over uh, even just practical things like time management and so on, uh, that's good. Um, and if you can inspire other people to improve the quality of their lives uh, in a positive and non-harmful way, then I would suggest that maybe, I don't know, maybe that has something to do with leadership. Of course, the problem with LinkedIn is that, uh, and it's not a problem with the site itself, it's the, it's, the, it's the mindset, it's the collective mindset, because you see, their definition of leadership is all to do with controlling people. They may deny it, but effectively, it's all about uh, them influencing the behaviour of others and having control and power over other people. That's why I'm saying it's a master-slave thing. But here's uh, the challenge. The, the challenge, well, there's a couple of challenges to put it mildly, but one of the challenges is that this insane system that they are pandering to. I'm talking about the system that has people waking up in the dark, waiting in three hours of traffic jams every day, right? This is insane, okay? And that insane system happens to be unsustainable. The the economic situation, I mean, I'm looking at the stock markets and trading them every day. There is some really heavy stuff going on and I'm not a conspiracy nut. All of this Brexit stuff and various other things that are going on, um, it's all going to come to a head 
It was the worst one-day drop ever. The UK's vote to leave the European Union last week taking a major toll on the markets. Global markets losing more than $2 trillion in paper wealth on Friday, according to data from S&P Global. That's a one-day sell-off record, even worse than the whipsaw trading sessions during the 2008 financial crisis. And I know we're all sick about talking about the Middle East, but did you see what happened in Baghdad just the other day? Check it out. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, that's not Baghdad, that's Paris you're looking at. And as a matter of fact, none of this even made the mainstream media. It never even got on the news. And there's hours and hours of footage like this. I used to go to Paris every year, uh, and I liked going there. I'm not going to Paris this year, folks. I don't think I'll be going at all. So you have to ask yourself, is there anything normal about this day that we are living in? Is there anything normal about anything that we're seeing right now uh, for those of us who have our eyes on the ball and are keeping tabs on the lay of the land? And when recession arrives, when, when economic hardship arrives, the first people to be fired are the middle managers. And that's what these people are trying to be middle management, right? They are the very, very first people to be shown the door. And of course, in uh, 10 years time, the robots shall arrive, okay? Believe me, the robot bots are on the way. I was in the supermarket, huge big place, Asda, it's owned by Walmart. Last night, there was literally one staff member and one security guard in this massive big place. The robots are on the way, folks, and what we're looking at here is 19th century business philosophy that's all to do with controlling people. How many of those people who are so eager to say, I'm a leader, how many of them stayed up till five in the morning last night learning new skills, new, let's say, programming skills or something that really does bring value to the marketplace instead of just a sound bite. How many of them have actually uh, learned stuff and made stuff, you know? Um, I would speculate probably not too many. I would be willing to bet my house that not one of those people who has said, oh, I'm a leader, I would bet that not one of them has ever approached a boss and said, listen, I've had a think about it and I'm no longer willing to come in on some packed train every morning because it's not an efficient use of time and I think it gives me the flu. So we're going to change the deal. How many of them had the balls to have that conversation? Probably none. And by the way, I don't want you to think I'm going all Alex Jones on you here. It's over for the globalist. Break the conditioning now. Look, all I'm saying is, instead of spending your days trying to figure out how to control people more efficiently, why not retool and figure out how to bring real value to this brand new marketplace that we are about to experience? That's all I'm saying. I'll catch you later.